<laughs> What's the most rewarding aspect of van life? Mm. And woo! Bleach. The smell is strong. <laughs> TMI, maybe. How do you guys sustain your travels? Is you rolling? Is you rolling? Is you rolling? With Isotu and Obina. Today we are back with the QA to answer some questions that we got from y'all. It was popping, people. We've been doing this for four months now. That's right. So let's get to it. It's a new year. New year. 2020. Happy 2020. Even though the year starts in spring. <laughs> I'm here to give you two. <laughs> okay. <laughs> First question from Novel Culture is... Shout out. Shout out Novel Culture. What's good? The first question is, what do our parents think about van life? Okay, let me, let me see, let me see that. Let me answer this first. Uh, to my lovely parents out there, hello, can't do. Uh, hmm, what do our parents think about van life? Well, we had a conversation that uh, they, they uh, sat us down and uh, pretty much let us know directly how they feel about van life uh some words were mentioned uh i won't put these in the video a little bit uh i'm not gonna say hurtful i got thick skin but uh directed targeted language uh they don't like it to paraphrase but <laughs> hey it's been four months <laughs> And for my parents, my mom is really supportive. Yes, she, she is. Yeah, yes, she'll she is. Shout out send Mama us. K. Yeah, she even send us like van life videos. She's looking forward to. Uh, she has a camper, like a bigger camper, that she had before we did van life. So, her and her husband have been even looking at it, trying to see what it would take to get it on the road, so they could take short trips too. We uh, inspired the people. Yes, you gotta inspire your people. But yeah, my family's supportive, so that's been good. At least we have a mixture of both, because it provides different sorts of motivation, I will say that. My dad <laughs> actually came to visit us when we were in Burbank, so he's the only one who's actually seen the van in person. He probably thought it was a lot smaller than in the videos. <laughs> Man, we had selfies in front of the van. Yeah, we'll put in a selfie here, you know, so you can see. Shout out. Yeah. So that's how our parents feel about us doing van life. Exactly. Second question is um, from Zelonius Funk. What are the challenges of being young black Americans doing van life slash how do you overcome them? Uh. <laughs> Let me go. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> uh, you could just take out the van life and we can answer the question. Uh, you know, you get looks. Uh, you pull up in certain neighborhoods and you don't know what type of time it is. Uh, any police attention is kind of weird. You know, knocks seem to be extra different. Like, I feel like it'd be different if I wasn't uh, a young African pioneer in the van. Um, it'd be like, you know, maybe just, oh, what's up? But, you know, it just, everything has like a different tip to it you know uh and you know that's just history so i, like, <laughs> I don't even know what to uh I, yeah honestly i'm like being black in van life is like being black in a workplace is like being black in a school i feel like it's a lot of the same <laughs> things just in different like situations um i said a one benefit is you know like being black and like any of those other situations you're very static so it's yeah. like if i were to walk out the door at my job they probably you know get my job away but like i could just drive a, you know like if i don't like the fuck i just leave you know we just pull out and and uh 
that's a that's a Go benefit. Different. You know, we looking at the positives. In yeah. 2020. And we can be ourselves fully because we're always on the road. So it's like if we go somewhere and we're like, I feel like this energy is not matching my energy, then we can just leave and not and like move on with our lives. Like we don't have to like stay thinking about something or like try to make something work. Exactly. It's just like we can leave. And there be certain neighborhoods where you know you see certain things and we like we're not staying here. Uh, yes. But yeah. Trying to think what else. Yeah, I'm like... I don't got no more to yeah. say. I will say, too, I, sometimes I feel like, especially in cities, mm -hmm. I don't know if it's... I feel like it's a combo of who we are and the way our van looks that I feel like people are less likely to come up to us if they're other van lifers and be like, hey, what's up? Like, how's it going? Da -da -da. I feel like people are less likely to come up to us and, like be all buddy buddy van life friends if they see us because yeah I feel like people make a lot of assumptions about us when they see us from the way that we look and the way our van looks that I think that also adds a layer to it because I do think it would be different if we were driving in like a fancy sprinter van people might think we stole it <laughs> I'll play. I got jokes. I got jokes. Okay, next question is from uh, Jake Jr. the Jeep. Jake Jr. the Jeep. Hey. I don't know who you are, but shout out. Thanks for asking the question. Um, the question is, how did you take the plunge? In the van life? Into van life. Yeah. Uh, well, in East Oakland, we... Uh, well, uh, how do we even get into this? How did you get into this? Because... Um, that's the I took the plunge because of her. I knew that the life that I had worked towards and was living was not fun, so I knew I wanted to leave and I always have enjoyed traveling. Like in high school I did a year abroad in um China. I took a gap year after high school. I went to Senegal for a year and then in college I also studied abroad in China for a year. So like I've always liked traveling. And so I was kind of like, oh, what's a way that I can travel and be nomadic and do it now and not have to wait? Um, so yeah, that's how I came across van life. And watching people's van life videos, it was like, oh, y'all can do that, like, I can do that, like, okay, mm -hmm. let's go. Mm -hmm. Like, why not? So, yeah. And then I think I feel like, honestly, it didn't feel like we were taking the plunge. It felt like... This was like sure. the only option. It that... felt like I was taking a pledge. Let's <laughs> no, uh, maybe for you, uh, but I felt like okay, uh, I was making a ton of money, but I was very unfulfilled. Um, and then I really thought about like, okay, if I continue on this course, like, where does this end? And it ends with you, you know, at the job, like retiring, little company party and whatnot. But like, that's not that doesn't sound fulfilling and plus like i said in the first video i can't leave a job to children so like i would only have measly accumulated wealth so it's like the mortgage free financial freedom aspect was like after you showed me the videos i was just like okay like you know provided that we build an online businesses like we could probably stack a lot more paper mm -hmm. and uh if we were living in you know uh, the Bay Area and paying expensive rents to, you know... Live in a room. Yeah. That's especially <laughs> the size of the van. <laughs> ah! Yeah. The facts. Yeah. Okay. This question is from Longoria Alex. Me go! Hey! <laughs> Our friend Alex. Back. <laughs> he said, is it hard to be vegan or sustainable when you on the move and such? I would say, uh, no, no, it's not, Alex. It is not. <laughs> it's pretty easy. Uh, there's a lot of like, you know, you can mix it up. There's a lot of grocery stores. We do a lot mm -hmm. of cooking. Uh, we have to do a lot of cooking, and mm -hmm. honestly, it tastes better yeah. than like a lot of the food. That so we many restaurants buy. don't season, especially like I feel like. A lot of regular restaurants, like non-vegan restaurants, don't season. But then when you go down to the vegan restaurants, like... 
Y'all, there's this restaurant where we are. I'm not going to say where we are, but uh, it's the one vegan restaurant in town. So if you look it up on Yelp, y'all, they're serving like lettuce. Like, Straight like, lettuce, like nothing. Like iceberg, slim. <laughs> it's bad. It's real bad. But uh, I wouldn't say it's hard. Yeah. I, I would say it's easy because since we're always essentially on the move, we can go to the grocery store, buy our produce, cook it. Like, we also, fun fact, do not have a refrigerator, um, which we've thought about, like, oh, maybe we need a, we'd need want a cooler, maybe something, but we honestly haven't, like, felt a need to buy a cooler mm-hmm. or any type of refrigeration because we just cook our food when we get it the same day or... Um, we have places in our van where it does stay super cool, so then we can keep our produce there for like, I say up to three days before it starts going bad. So, yeah, it's pretty easy. I think it would be harder if we were people who were big meat and dairy eaters because then you'd have to actually refrigerate stuff. And I also feel like with cooking, the smell of like the fumes from meat takes up a lot more airspace than like the fumes from cooking vegetables. You can smell bacon blocks away. Yeah, Um. (laughs) Yeah, that's true, because then we'll be stuck in all our clothes, all of our blankets. We we smell bacon wrap. Yeah. Yeah. So that is um, our answer to our question. Thank you, Alex. Um, Next question is from Kiana Soul. I like that name. Shout out Kiana Soul. Keeping the van clean, winter camping, and foods. Okay. The first one, uh, keeping the van clean. Well, uh, hmm. I'm trying to start an argument, Kiana. Uh, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I like to, I like a clean workspace. Let me just, let me say that. However, am I the best at keeping the van clean? No. I feel Even like the outside. Hmm. Well, so relatively small. to the two of us, no shots. <laughs> Keep going. Well, <laughs> relatively to the two of us, uh, I think I be cleaning a lot. I, I wash a lot of the dishes, and uh, uh, I don't even know if that's true. I wash dishes as of yesterday, and... Uh, you know, I throw stuff away. Uh, so do I. We get rid. We downsize. Uh, so, like, you know, we don't have too much stuff. Yeah. I'm not saying you don't. I'm not saying you don't. But my don't. hair does get everywhere when I have it, be it in Afro. It everywhere, Afro. y'all. Like. That's <laughs> because it's so small. <laughs> but I feel like that happened in the apartment. So, like, I feel like that's just hair. So, you know. Uh, yeah, I don't know how people do it with animals that shit. Oh, that's nasty. I'm, Mm, that's just different. That's a different way of living. Let me, <laughs> let me say that. Winter camping, right? Right now it's January, beginning of January, end of December. But we in the desert, yeah. so uh, right now it's like 65. Yeah. As you can see, we in t-shirts. Our uh, coldest night has been like 35. And even then, when you like under a blanket and, you know, we have insulation and stuff. But, like, if you cook, you know, it's already warm. Make sure you keep that heat in. But, you know, don't OD off the carbon monoxide. Yeah, keep your window a little open. Uh, just just to, just you know, you just crack it. You just crack it like mommy said. Hey, crack that one. Uh, but. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be cold, but, like, under blankets, like. It's not bad. With two people, it's not. Yeah, it'd be kind of high. I'd be sweating. It's also like, yeah, like we don't have a we don't have a heater, but we also haven't felt like the need to go buy a heater. So I feel like that speaks to how cold it gets. And I, yeah, I didn't even think. I feel like when we were building the van, I thought like, oh, the coldest night we'll have will be like forty five degrees. Like we won't be anywhere where it gets colder than that. But even though we've been in like coldest night like 35 it hasn't been that bad it's just like takes a little extra getting up in the morning because you're like it's cold but like 
honestly, it's probably the same temperature that my mom keeps her house in Michigan during winter. You just gotta wear sweaters. Like, it's not bad. I be sleeping relatively nude, so like, it's not cold. Yeah, that's very true. Blankets, though, you need to get your blanket game up. We got three blankets. Three blankets. Three blankets. Thick. Keep yeah. them, you know, thick, hearty blankets. We don't want no, no skin. Question, I feel really bad because I do not want to mess up your name. It sounds like Renata Lorraine. We appreciate you because you always give off good energy. Y'all, for real, shout out. Um, first question that she sent was, what was your biggest obstacle to adjusting to van life? Hmm, I would say I had to learn how to be a car mechanic uh, overnight. <laughs> uh, <laughs> You know, I went from, you know, random jobs, but like I was never fixing cars like that. But, you know, I could read a book. I got the knowledge. But like when you actually have to like fix the car or else you ain't moving, it's a different, you know, it's your house. Throw that book out the window and you better start asking people questions and talking to people and trying to figure out answers uh, pronto. Mm -hmm. So I that was my. I say for me, I feel like the first few like weeks I was always stressed about where we should park Facts. like I would be like I don't think we can park here can we yes, park we can. here I don't think we can park here parking here because yeah especially with like I don't like parking anywhere near like a neighborhood that looks like a little too suburby like all like yeah just because I feel like those are the type of people who prefer to call the police instead of like talking to any, yeah, so that was my biggest adjustment was like, where do we park, where do we park? Because it's like you have to think about it every day if you're moving. But since we've gotten out of, like, I feel like that's harder in like smaller towns where they don't have like any places that you can camp for free. But lately, like cities are super easy because nobody cares when you're in a city where you park because everybody's doing their own thing and then further out at least on the west coast there are lots of places that you can uh camp for free so for instance right now we're staying someplace where you can stay 14 nights for free and it's just free yeah. unincorporated land that yeah. you know someone didn't get to yet in america ain't no yeah. mall Ain't no shopping center. No toilets, no running water. You gotta... You know, make put do. Yeah. Do, but... But it's also, like, a 10-minute drive to Walmart. So it's super I wouldn't close. even say 10 minutes. Five minutes. Yeah. Is. Drive to Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, you can be out in nature and then come in and get Wi-Fi from McDonald's and Starbucks. Shout out. In a library. Go to your local library, my people. Stay yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And then next question um, is how... Also, Renata Lorraine. Yes. Shout out for the two questions. Double hitter. Um, how slash where did you find your home? And if not too personal, how much was it? Okay. So, we found our home uh, in Oakland. Shout out Oakland. Shout out the town. Town business. You know what it is. Uh, <laughs> uh, so we found our home on Craigslist. Yeah. Uh, Craigslist. And so we were just looking all Craigslist for different Like we've been looking for maybe like two, three weeks, two, three weeks. I wanted a Sprinter van. Uh, I was very much caught up in the trend and I had bread to spend. But, uh, what had happened was, you know, uh, we looked at the budget. We was like, you know what? It don't even make sense. Plus we would have to go to LA to pick up the car way too much. And then it got sold. So uh, we was looking and then we, Boo yeah. found something on Craigslist. So we go to the spot on Craigslist and it was a brother in East Oakland. Uh, I won't put his name out there, but a brother from East Oakland by, way of, the, <laughs> by, by the way of Nolens. I think I already put my yeah, yeah. my my fault, but, but uh, um, yeah, he, he had a ton of vans. Uh, he was uh, in the camper van business. Um, and so he showed us two, and we picked one, mm -hmm. and boom, boom, bow, you know, cash, cash in hand. We drove away. 
with the with our new home. And it was thirty five hundred. Yeah. Okay, I'm finding the other questions. Um, the next question, Instagram handle Gabriella Moma. These are ones that people um send me on my account. What's good, Gabby? Shout out. So. Uh, they asked running water, showers, and bathroom. So Planet Fitness. Yeah. Planet Fitness. That is the key. <laughs> Planet Fitness. We okay. have a black card. Me- Obina has a black card membership, which is like twenty-five bucks a month, I believe. Lexi. And with that, you can go to any Planet Fitness that you want, and you can always bring a guest. So that's why we only pay for one because you can always bring a guest. Technically, in the fine print, they have rules that are like, you're only allowed to go outside of your home gym 10 times per month. And I remember I was worried about that. I was like, are they like, gonna be like, you've been too many times this month. But nobody cares. They don't care. It's, they get paid yeah. like 13 an hour. They don't yeah. look, they don't, yeah. Nobody cares. They don't care. And we do actually though have a toilet in our van. Like we have a little, bathroom section Mm -hmm. uh so like if we have to pee we go in the van but if we have to poop we did not go in the van because we tried that (laughs) first week don't do it bleach and the smell is strong (laughs) tmi maybe no (laughs) we're trying to help you not make the same mistakes that we if you get a bathroom in your van because you probably won't but honestly i've I don't, I, because we have a toilet, I can't imagine, well, I guess people pee in bottles, honestly, that, like, if you don't have a toilet in your van, and, like, it's late at night and you have to go, you can pee outside if you're in nature, or people will pee in bottles, but a lot of people, like, will go to Walmart or Target every morning to have to go to the bathroom, which, I feel like that's a lot of work, but people make it work because most people do not have toilets in their van and for running water we have a sink and we like even bought a water pump to set up running water but we just never never set it up yeah because we were i'll take full responsibility but we had to go yeah we were trying to leave you know at the same time we were like how important is this sink is it another week important and it wasn't and to be honest the only thing that is difficult with that is washing dishes which Even if we had running water in here, we still have to fill it up with water. Um, And like the easiest way would be like certain places where you can pay for that. But like we don't like paying. Why would we pay for like gas stations? Yeah. Uh, Yeah, you're obligated to you know free air and water Uh, once we get gas. Oh. But uh. Yeah. So basically, the only thing that gets a little tricky sometimes is washing dishes because like for our drinking water. We buy um, Crystal Geyser spring water bottles because we don't like drinking fluoridated water. Mm. Protect your pineal people. Um, so yeah, but we usually find a park that has water and fill up our empty water bottles to wash our dishes. And that's how we do that. But yeah, if we're like washing vegetables, that's just with our drinking water and we rinse, put it down the toilet. Yeah, pretty easy. Um, next question is from Kyle Dank. He said, "What's hey. the what's the most rewarding aspect of van life?" Mm. I would say uh, being outside of like society, as they call it. Uh, like you don't feel obligated to do things that mm-hmm. people like do like and we'll notice people's patterns we'll be like driving we'll be like what day is it today so we don't even keep track of like day of the week it's not that we don't look i'm not gonna say that like we just you know aloof to all of that but like we don't really it don't affect you like i don't gotta clock in monday at 9 a.m so you know if i'm like it's the 26th i gotta ask is that a monday um but like we'll notice people's patterns like people only go outside the parks and stuff on weekends traffic is bad on weekends because that's when people have free time so you know we do like other activities that people don't do on weekends we'd be inside on the weekends and outside on the weekdays like 
go to a park, it'd be empty. Go to yeah. a Starbucks, nobody on a like Tuesday. So um, I think to me that's that's the that's the one. I feel like for me, it's probably that you get to move on your own, like at your own pace, and like everything is ultimately up to you which is like very empowering, but can also be stressful at times. Cause it's <clears throat> like, if we're in a place and we realize like we're feeling like we've gotten too comfortable here and gotten like too used to it and aren't like being as productive or on top of things that we need to be, then it's like, okay, we move, we go somewhere else. And yeah, it's kind of like, I feel like for instance, like one thing that frustrated me about like my past life is like working in an office. You are constantly waiting for other people to like see your worth and to like, like a lot of value comes from like other people praising you or telling you that you did a good job on a project or stuff like that. Um, like you become dependent on it just because that's the way that workplaces are. That it's nice to be outside of that and like you have to create value and purpose for yourself like you have to like your day does not have purpose unless you decide to give a purpose like there's no one telling you that this is your purpose for today this is what you're going to do to pass the day today it's like I we every day have to decide like what's the purpose what am I working on today what do I want to get done today yeah so the next question is from Irvin Humana and she says, how do you guys sustain your travels? Uh, entrepreneurship, uh, saved monies. Mm -hmm. um. I feel like it's like, I feel like we just passed the phase where the first portion of our van life journey is kind of like, everybody tells you you can make money online, but it's kind of like, the re like people telling you and the reality of like figuring out for yourself like how you can do it that's a journey within itself mm -hmm. so I feel like we've just gone through a phase of like trying lots of different things to figure out what is the what way yeah like what fits our lifestyle what is actually like fulfilling to us and makes us feel good and like brings value and goodness to the world because like you could sell anything online sell things cheap things from China sell it online but it's like do I actually want to do that if you bought that paper there's a lot of money in it there's a ton of ways and get your money but it's like what are the ways that we want to do it so yeah I feel like we went through a time of like figuring that out um, but right now we both make money from selling online courses so I have an online course online about how to create your own online course because personally I feel like it's the best way to make money online because you're providing value Bar none. providing value to people and the amount of people that you have to bring value to in order to have a sustainable lifestyle is not that many like you get to build a smaller tight-knit community of people who are brought together from like learning and knowledge rather than like trying to sell everybody everything it's like let me just hit people who are at the not necessarily at the same place that I'm at right now but like trying to be at where I'm at right now trying to have the lifestyle that I have that it's like I can tell you and show you how to get there so that's my online course I'll drop the information below and Obina has his own online course too uh yeah and then i also you know uh was in the business of making websites and apps for people um and that was cool and i you know i'm still willing to provide that service you know for the right cost but uh i transitioned more into like uh product based things um so like i can sell you a thing as opposed to like my time because mm -hmm. uh uh, people value your time differently than you value your time, which is what I've learned uh, in my um, stint doing that. So um, I had an app on the way. Um, it's about financial literacy. 
Um, I also teach people how to get their app ideas out. Um, I also, you know, help them with any code mentorship. Uh, basically just taking the knowledge that I have from like industry and experience and translating that into something that, you know, is commoditizable that somebody, you know, will pay for and get actual value from. Um, so it's a lot of like stuff related to tech and financial empowerment and uh, it's basically how you can, you know, know the rules of the game and, you know, move up the ladder. So that's what I do. I feel like it's cool doing online courses because like you're showing people how to step into their own power and like giving them the tools they need to succeed instead of kind of positioning yourself as like somebody who did it in a way that no one else can do it it's like I did it now let me show you how I did it and teach you so that you can do it too um, so next two questions are from Jessica um, the first one is... Hey, shout out Jessica. Laundry. Laundromat. Yeah, laundromats. If we're in a town where we know people, people's houses where they got free laundry, but otherwise, laundromats, yeah. Basically, every town, every town, for the most part, has one because every town has people who don't have laundry machines at their house. I'm gonna own a laundromat one day, folks. Yeah, they be making... Boku Bucks. I don't even be there. True. You just hire an attendant to watch the machines. Um, and her next question is kitchen and food storage solutions. Cabinets. No, I'm playing. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, playing, I'm playing, I'm playing. Uh, no, I, legit, yeah. though. Cabinets. I say the first thing is to downsize the amount of kitchen gadgets that you have and be realistic with yourself to say, like, what do I actually need to cook most of my, my favorite meals? Like, do I need to have all these tools and gadgets or do I only need like, like do I need five knives or do I need two knives? Just things like that. Like, yeah, do I five. actually need a whisk? Yeah, stuff like that. Like, do you need a cheese grater? Is yeah. it that important? Like, for real? Yeah. I mean, if dairy is a part of your life, I'm black toast. <laughs> but if dairy is a part of your life, then maybe maybe you might want to cut down somewhere else but like we threw away a lot of stuff like a rolling yeah. pin yeah you know, i brought it but where do what oven flatbread what what oven on stovetop <laughs> burnt pita <laughs> okay and our last question is from atkins sydney uh they asked best cities to boondock in well, so far, we've only been major cities. I guess it's just Oakland and Great LA city, by area. The way. Town business. Yeah. Oakland, um, you just got to know the right places to park. You can park by Lake Merritt. You can park by parks. Yeah, at parks. Hey, certain Oakland. parks at night because nobody. Nobody cares. Like, everybody's just, just chilling. Got, yeah, you got to park in the right part of Oakland. Yeah. But it's like a town. Yeah. Like, nobody, you know, town business. For L.A. area, when we first got there, we stayed at Venice Beach for, like, two Not the place. Mm -mm. Not the city to boondock in. Can't really boondock by, like, million-dollar homes. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, you can technically park there because there are lots of people parked there. But it's also, like... They got signs, like, yeah. specifically if your car is above, like, six and a half feet. Yeah. Which is, like, that's mad targeted. Like, you know what you're doing when you put up that sign, yeah. so. And also, Venice is a place where there are lots of people who think they're better than you for <laughs> no reason. Um, so if you're into that kind of thing, go there. But, like, yeah. Like, we even went out to eat. We were going to go to his to get vegan food and we walked into a restaurant and we walked right out because the vibes were not right and it was like why would I give you my money if the vibes aren't right yeah and then other than that we parked in Burbank for a while great city for boondocking yeah. look they don't care they do not care uh, there's a street and I'm gonna just put a the street out there called San Fernando Road look 
I, it looked like it was invented by van lifers. But van lifers who are never leaving. Uh, they on a different van life. They on like a. And I ain't knocking nobody's situation. Look, that's not what I'm here to do. But they on like a more permanent van life. Stay. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. But. So our camera SD card filled up. We are back. That was actually the what last up, question. What up, Yeah, that was the last question. Should we do a, do we still want to do a, we'll do a reflection. Four months? Yeah, we've been van lifing for four months. So we're just going to talk about whatever comes to our mind. About how it's been or what we've learned during the last four months. Let me think. Um, I would say my cooking skills have gotten dramatically better. Uh, you know, I could chop onions with the best of them, you know? No tears. No tears. Uh, I'm a better driver, a better mechanic, a better husband, and a better father. No, <laughs> well. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, not yet. Uh, I like vegetables a lot more. I yeah. appreciate them. I appreciate sleep. I also appreciate not having phone service. Mm. I appreciate the outdoors. I appreciate fresh air, breath. I appreciate my time. Uh, I value my time a lot more than I did uh, um, living according to like strictly bills. Um, and I appreciate uh, that we're on a journey to build legacy, um, wealth, to empower other people, to meet other people, and to see more of the land. Uh, all of these things I appreciate a lot, a lot more. Um, I appreciate Sorry, my this family. Wind is kicking. Oh yeah, the wind is. The wind is. You know, it's windy. Uh, but yeah, all of those things uh, I appreciate, um, and you know, uh, it's allowed me to get more ideas and to be more creative and you know that's why we got a lot of things in store for this new decade decade 2020 and beyond uh you know courses apps all of these things uh to empower people give them the knowledge all of that i also appreciate myself you know i look pretty pretty uh pretty good pretty handsome and i appreciate this beautiful lovely woman right here Do you have anything to say? <laughs> um, I'd say <laughs> I feel like I've learned how to like have a sense of urgency, but not be stressed because those are two different things. So like having a good sense of urgency around things. So like if I have an idea about something to execute it now immediately while I still have the like energy and fire behind the idea versus like sitting with an idea thinking about it a lot waiting for it to be perfect but then by the time it's perfect I've lost the energy and excitement that I had around it because I overanalyzed it so yeah just like being more action oriented I also feel like I learned to appreciate myself more and like the things that make me an individual like having time away from people like not even necessarily people but like group settings because I feel like it's different when you're one on one with people but like group dynamics people we have an idea of what it means to like have fun in a group or what it means to do XYZ in a group that it's been nice to be away from certain group dynamics that I feel like I've Like, before I felt like I feel like I have to do things to be, like, normal or, like, a part of a group or something. But now I feel like I'm back to enjoying the things that make me unique and, like, wanting to do more of that and to, like, bring out the uniqueness rather than, like, tone it down because I'm in an office eight hours a day or I'm just around people all the time who don't see the world the same way that I necessarily do. So that's been good. 
definitely appreciate you a lot more because you've really been working, doing a lot, especially when anything goes wrong with the car. He got the knowledge. Um, and our battery is at 5%, so let me go fast. Uh, oh, yeah. I appreciate uh, Planet Fitness. <laughs> uh, I've been working out. I've been on my uh, Bow Flex. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've been reading more. That's been nice. Mm, appreciate books. I feel like... Let's see if I can put this in. Uh, I feel like before... I thought that things needed to be perfect. And now I'm enjoying that, like, it's more important to do something rather than to do it perfectly. Because if you wait till you can do it perfectly, you will never do it. You, probably, you will yeah. never, ever do it. Yeah, you probably waited too long. Yeah. Um, I appreciate Martinelli's. You know, I, I be, we be popping bottles. That's our celebration drink. Woo! We, we celebrate bottles. a lot. Yeah, you gotta celebrate, gotta celebrate life. Celebrate. Yeah, gotta celebrate life. Yeah, um, it's only like less than three dollars for a bottle, so. Hey, get you some. It's like the Vov Coco of apples, and if you don't know what Vov Coco is, I don't drink no 